Hi and welcome back to our Dreamweaver tutorial. In this video we're going to go ahead and learn how to set up this rotating banner area in our project. And in the last video we went ahead and downloaded and installed jQuery on our website. In this um, video we're going to learn how to set up the actual scripts that create this um, effect on our page. Now the name that's generically given to this type of a tool is um, called a slider. And it's called a slider because the earliest versions of these tools didn't have the image fade in and out the way we see it here, but actually just had the images slide over one after the other. So that's where they got the name slider from. But um, today there are dozens and dozens and dozens of sliders that are available for you to use. Um, and all of them have different effects. Some of them have um, multiple effects. Some of them have special features like you can see here. I've got this drop down box on each one of my images. And that's a feature of this particular banner slider. So if you want, you can simply go to Google and search for banner slider and you'll find all sorts of these tools available for you. In the case of this project, we're going to use the one um, that is included in my framework. Now, to start off this part, we're going to need to make sure that we have the images that we need. Right now, if we take a look at our template, we can just see I'm using the one image here. And this image is 900 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall. And you can either use your own images or if you've downloaded the materials for the course, you'll have those images in your banner folder. You don't need to use four images. In this case, I'm using four. Um, you just need to have um, two or more images. You want to be careful um, not to load up too many images. Uh, I would say 10 or 12 is the most that you're going to want to use with the slider uh, because um, more than that will really slow down um, the loading of your web page. So um, you don't want to uh, use too many. But again, we're using four and uh, you could safely use 10 or 12 um, of these images. And if you're using your own images instead of the ones um, that I have, the images um, all need to be the same size, in this case 900 by 300. And actually in this case the height is optional. You could make the height of your image whatever you wanted. Uh, but the width does need to be equal to the width of the page in this case. So we do need to make sure the images are 900 pixels wide. But again, the important part about this is that all the images that you're using are the same width and height, the exact same width and height. So we have um, those images there. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and copy the files that you need from my framework folder and move those into our project folder. So and again you can you can find banner sliders all over the internet. You just go to Google and search for banner slider. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my framework and I'm going to go into the folder called Timothy Framework and then into the JS folder and finally into the plugins folder. And the folder that we want to copy is called banner slider. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on that and copy it. And then I'm going to go into my project folder and I'm simply going to right click and paste this in there. So we've got access to all of those files. So now I'm back in my uh, project folder here. And if you don't immediately see um, banner slider appear here, remember just hit the refresh button and you will see the banner slider reappear or appear. And when we open that folder up, we'll see there are two folders inside of it along with a text file that has the instructions in it. 
And the first thing we need to do is we need to move these two files into their appropriate folder. So I'm going to go, and again, I'm in the banner slider folder right now inside of CSS. I'm going to drag this file out into my main CSS file. And I'll click update if it, if it asks me to. And then we're going to do the same thing with our JavaScript file. We're just going to drag that down into the JS folder. So now these two folders should be empty and you could even delete them if you want. We'll need to come to these instructions in just a little um, just a little bit. Um, so we'll leave those there. So the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and open up my template file. And when I do that, I'm going to go into code view. And I need to be working in the head section of my document. And I usually put this type of stuff um, at the bottom, right before the closing head section. But you could put it um, really anywhere you want. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to link to that script slider.js. So I'm going to go ahead and use the script tag. Remember, we need to use the type attribute, and the type that we're going to go ahead and select is text JavaScript. And even though this is a jQuery plugin that we're using, jQuery is just a form, an enhanced form of JavaScript. Um, and then the second um, attribute that we're going to go ahead and use is the source attribute. And I like to use the browse option, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and go into my JS folder for my project and there's slider.js. We'll then close that script tag and then we'll do another closing script tag. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to link to the style sheet for the slider. So again I'm going to use the link tag just like I did before for our main style sheet. I'm going to use the href attribute and I'm going to select browse. I'm still in my JavaScript folder so I'm going to go up one level using this button right here and then into CSS and there's slider.css. A major mistake that people make at that point is they accidentally select um, styles.css. You want to select slider.css. And then we'll go ahead and put the other three attributes in that we need. The relationship attribute, which says that this link is to a style sheet. The type attribute, which should be text slash CSS. And the media attribute, which should be screen. And then don't forget to close your link bracket. So now we have two links to um, those two files. When I save this, it's going to ask me if I want to update all the files that have been built on this template. And I do, so I'm going to go ahead and click Update. And then Close. Now, after you do that, if you look up here, just below the tab that has your file name on it, you're going to see the Related Files area. And this shows you all the files that are linked to this HTML file. And we saw that earlier when we went to jQuery.js. We were able to see what was in that file. Same thing with styles.css. Now we have slider.js and slider.css. And when I click on that, I should see code in those windows. Um, if you see code in the windows, then you know that you've set that up right. If you get an error that says, sorry, this file hasn't been found on the local disk, you've made a mistake in your href or your source attribute value. So you want to go ahead and retype those two um, lines. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to go grab a piece of code out of my setup instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and you'll see here on step three 
there's a block of code that's going to allow us to activate the script. So I'm going to copy that. Everything between lines 13 and 19, I'm going to copy between the opening script tag and the closing script tag. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste these that in to this document. And we're going to talk about some of the options that you have um, related to that in just um, a little bit. So now we've got the three necessary pieces set up in our head section. The actual slider script, the CSS that goes along with the slider, and the script that activates this slider.js document. So now I'm ready to scroll down into the body section of my document and find my banner div. Now even though we're working with the Manchester template, this is going to work exactly the same in any template or any website that you work in. You're going to add those three items and then the only thing that you need in the body of your document to begin is just an empty div. So I deleted that image file and that just left me with an empty banner div. And again, I'm going to go into the instructions here and scroll down and you're going to see I've got a div here called slider. And I need to select everything in between the opening and the closing divs here. And copy that go back into my main template and I'm going to paste it between my opening and closing banner div tags. And there we go. And I need to indent this a little bit to make it look right. And then I'll save it. You don't need to update your um, pages every single time you change the template. So I'm going to go ahead and click don't update. It will ask you every time you save the file. And really the only time you need to update them is right before you actually um, test the page to make sure everything is working correctly. Now, there are a couple of different items here. And you're going to see a comment here that says, use this list item if you want to include a link. So in other words, if you want to include a link so that when somebody clicks on the banner, they go to a particular page, you're going to go ahead and use this code. The other piece of code here you should use if you're not going to include a link. We're not going to include a link so I'm going to go ahead and just delete this right here. Now the actual banner image is this text right here, these four lines beginning with an opening list item and ending with a closing list item. Since I have four images that I'm going to go ahead and use, I need to copy that text and paste it in four times. And I want to actually get it in there, right? So there we go. So now I've got that pasted in four different times. This clear statement down here at the bottom in this unnamed div should be at the very bottom before your closing UL. Now the next thing you need to do is you need to point the source attribute for each one of your rotating images to the correct file. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything in between the two parentheses, including the two parentheses, and then just type a print, I'm sorry, type a quotation mark and use the browse option to go into my images folder, into my banner folder, and select the correct image that I want to use. And in this case it's just B2, B3, B4 all in the same folder. But you'd want to highlight and change each one of these to the correct file name. And a lot of people you're going to notice do name their images like this. B1 for banner 1, then B2, 
B3, B4. And that's just so it's um, quicker to type in by hand. There's not any rule that you need to um, do that. Um, but a lot of people do um, like doing it that way. It makes everything um, a little bit more consistent. So now I'm going to go ahead and now that I've got all this in, I'm going to save my file. And this time I do want to update my pages because I want to actually test this and see how it's working. So I'll go ahead and click update and then close. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and preview this in Chrome. And let's see if it's working. And sure enough, there is my sliding banner. Now you're going to notice one thing um, right off the back that's not working here is the amount of space that's right here. And in the next video I'm going to go ahead and show you how to adjust the settings for your banner slider and also how to use the CSS to get everything set up. So we'll see you in the next uh, Dreamweaver training video.